Okay, thanks a lot. I'm going to use a microphone here because I'm a walker. I'm not behind the podium. Okay, um, I am going to look at the similarities between scaling up technology, agriculture technology, between Latin America and Asia. And I'm going to use El Salvador, which is not a Feed the Future program, but it was an economic growth program that I worked on for seven years. And there's a lot of similarities in scaling up, and I'm going to show that contrasted against the Cambodia Harvest Program, which is an FTF which we are scaling up. Okay, a little bit about the background. El Salvador versus Cambodia, you can see the dependence on agriculture, both in the rural area, El Salvador about 50%, Cambodia much higher, about 80%. Land size, one farmer in El Salvador had one hectare or more. In Cambodia right now, you can see that a commercial horticulture, I'm looking at the commercial horticulture value chain when I'm comparing these two countries, is only one-eighth of the hectare, so you need eight individuals in Cambodia to equal one hectare in El Salvador, a very big difference. Access to water, localized, limited water, in some cases there isn't any water available during the dry season or it is very localized. Climatic risks, yes, we have floods, droughts, we have volcanic activity, El Salvador, 23 volcanoes. Cambodia, as you know, climatic risks uh, in drought and significant flooding like here in Thailand. Farming as a business, maybe one out of 100. Cambodia, maybe I'm very optimistic, as one out of 2,000. Now this is commercial. I'm not talking about home garden, I'm talking commercial. I would even think it's much higher than that. Uh, extension services on technology, both poor Input availability, I'm talking about input suppliers, distributors, seeds, fertilizers, other equipment, very limited in order to jumpstart, in order to jumpstart the commercial sector. Finance lending, MIF banks, outdated, they don't understand. They're more on the traditional side with beans and corn. What happened to my microphone? You were shouting. Okay. okay, all right. And percent <laughs> annual fresh imports, very interesting. El Salvador imports or has imported about 85% of everything. Uh, Cambodia, depending on who you talk to and what information, uh, it's about 60 to 80%. Okay, developing the commercial horticulture sector. What was scaled up? What did we do in both areas, both the LAC and the Asian areas? More technical staff. It equaled more area coverage, locations, more farmers assisting. More area under vegetable production. We're commercial. That's what we're looking for. More volume and farmers involved. Productivity over a given area. We want higher yields. We want, want more volume to get more impact. Selected crops based on consumer demand. Obviously, we're market oriented. We want market reliability. We want market stability because farmers have to earn money or they wouldn't stay in the program. Development support needed. You can't do anything without developing the service sector in any commercial business. So we concentrated on service providers, sector sustainability, cost competitiveness. Scaling up through technology transfer. We look at three things. Productivity, quality, and cost in technology transfer. Attaining high productivity, Introducing new farming technologies, implementing good agricultural practices, good crop management, IPM, market-driven crops. Continuous technical assistance. We cannot do anything without training unless we have continued technical assistance. Just not giving somebody one or two or three days a month. We need consistent, consistent teaching. And we also do this through field events, field training events. Quality, number two, maintaining product quality. Attention to detail, farm supervision. Quality starts in the field. It doesn't start in the packing house. Good post-harvest practices. Costs, the third one. Effective farm management and accurate record keeping. This is how we scale up through technology transfer. Developing your service provider sector. Expansion of services. Richard, you'll see some similarities in this. We look at three areas, markets, finance, and input suppliers. Can't do them without the three. Market, markets link farmers to formal and informal buyers. 
advantages of farmer buyer relationships. We have to convince the farmer that there is a relationship into maintaining a buyer. Access to finance. Farmers don't have money in their pocket, they have to get the money from somewhere. We educate microfinance institutes and banks to higher technology, what they have to do in lending to higher technology. Adjust the lending options, just mentioned that. Progressive input suppliers, training modules for retail suppliers, we work with the wholesalers, mess, materials, equipment, seeds and supplies. Kind of a bad word. Uh, looking at distributors and those distributors on down to retailers. Train suppliers and basic rural extension services, very important. All right, now I'm gonna look at El Salvador. This is a model in which we have taken El Salvador, we had coffee, we had processing, we had horticulture, both field and greenhouse, and I took the greenhouse area to, to talk about today. We introduced low green cost, low cost greenhouses for commercial farming. We introduced plastic mulch, we introduced antivirus netting and structural change. We introduced new agriculture technology, drip irrigation systems, raised planting beds, hybrid seed, trellising, good agriculture practices, post-harvest practices, the works. We co-invested in demonstration houses with 30 farmers. We co-invested with them on the cost of a greenhouse, asking them if we gave you this X amount of money, we want you to build another greenhouse on your property with the returns from your investment. So we wanted to go from 30 to 60 houses. Each farmer would build one house and then eventually he would do 60. Reinvesting, establish six central packing sites. This is what we wanted for the volume. Work with input suppliers, banks, and identify markets. Another way to scale it up. Small enterprise, training and capacity building, another area where we had to significantly work with. And we wanted to reduce the imports of salad tomato. This is not for field tomatoes, but this is for salad tomatoes by 50%. That was our goal. Okay, <coughs> drivers are scaling up. We co-invested with 30 demo farmers in 30 houses, as I mentioned. Farmers constructed their own houses, so they learned what they wanted to we, they learned what we wanted to show them, so they would be able to construct their own houses. We get individual training for two and a half years to each individual farmer. We had farmer field days. We gave them business management with formal market linkages. We supplied them with training and mess availability, and we educated the credit lenders on greenhouse cost structure and business plans. The results. We went from three greenhouses to 87 or 4.6 hectares. Each individual house had 3.8 tons per house per year, or 27.6 tons per month. We attracted Walmart as the primary buyer, plus two other local supermarket chains. We reduced imports of salad tomato by 70% in the five years. Farmers had net earnings of 8,200. Input suppliers developed 11. Everybody was happy, and right now, Five years later, there's over 120 houses in this one area. That's El Salvador. That's how we scaled up in El Salvador, and we're doing basically the same here in Cambodia. In Cambodia, we're working with the commercial value chain, not in the greenhouse sector, but we're working with it in the field. We're introducing new technology for commercial horticulture farming. Again, drip irrigation, raised planting beds, plastic mulch, on 300 hectares total, 2,340 tons, basically eggplant, bitter gourd, and cucumber. These are the three primary crops that we were focusing on for the commercial market. And about 310% increase in yield over baseline. We have to track these because we have to convince the farmer that he is doing well, that he is making money, that he should succeed in this. We co-invested with 926 demo sites by the end of 213 right now, as of last month, reaching about 2,000 in 2015 at the length of the project. So we're scaling up from 296 up to about 2,000. We're organizing 760 farmers into 40 production groups to gain more stability in the market. Horizontal replication of 500 new farmers. So what we want by having these demo sites, 
we want neighboring farmers, and we're only saying 500 because this is a high investment type of an operation. So we're only looking at conservatively about 500 individual farmers that do not get direct technical assistance nor co-investment from us to go ahead and replicate what we are trying to do. Input uh, providers, we've got about 370 right now that we're working with. We want to get up to about 400. Uh, by the length of the project, we do seasonal imports uh, of these three crops by 20% per province. Hopefully we can get there. Okay, intensive farming. Intensive farming training and all agriculture practices through demonstration farms. This is what we have to focus on in order to get where we want to get, where we want to go, excuse me. Additional staff through partner NGOs. We work with about 28 NGOs, and my staff right now is about 340, about 97% are field staff. Very large project. Uh, irrigation companies train farmers and systems operating procedures and maintenance. We want to get the service providers coming in to also help out on looking at scaling up. We're bringing in different fertilizer formulations because the country did not have the formulations necessary for commercial agriculture. We're bringing in uh, different types of seeds also based on the market, based on climate change, based on seasonality, post-harvest practices to ensure quality, group neighboring producers to form producer groups, a very important part, getting the farmer to come together to farm groups so they can have more access to the markets and maintain the markets. Invite all interested farmers to field days. We have to replicate, not only in this area with our project, but in the other areas also with our project. Input provider training, about nine different modules. The challenges that we have faced in scaling up in both Latin America and here in Cambodia, building technical capacity, training and managing more technicians, through partner NGO. You're never going to go anywhere if you don't have trained staff. Your priority is training your staff first so your staff can train the farmers. Number one priority. If you want replication, you have to do it through some sort of a demonstration. So we have demonstration farms. And these demonstration farms provide all of the information and the technologies and techniques for growing. And we're also looking at the six again, productivity. Quality, buyers, credit, and, uh, oh yeah, and input suppliers. Intense farmer training, knowledge and continued extension. Extension for sustainability through private sector, through our input suppliers, and working with the government through government extension. Market security, establishing and maintaining reliable buyers, as I mentioned. Do not sacrifice quality for quantity. Everybody wants numbers, numbers, numbers. But those numbers have to mean something. They have to mean quality. If you don't have quality, you can't sell your product. If you don't have volume, you can't sell your product. So we have to concentrate on quality, even though it takes a little longer. Service provider development, they have to have affordable credit, and you have to have good input suppliers that are going to provide the services that you need to have that sector development. Farmers have to attain acceptable profit margins. Why? Because they have to make money. Why? Because you have to develop a sector. And you want to do farmer results, which builds farmer confidence. Farmers have to have confidence in what they're doing so they will succeed and be sustainable. Thank you. To learn more about scaling and how you can contribute to this growing body of knowledge, please visit agrilinks.org slash scaling.